Every city has them now. It's a familiar sight in almost every country, a common place for community and communications. 46-year-old Najib can't imagine life in Qatar without the internet. This carpenter from Lebanon may not need a computer to get through his daily grind, but it's become the first thing he's turned to once his workday is over. You come back from work tired and yet you feel comfortable when you log on to the internet. You don't feel like you're in a different country, you feel close to your family. They're in front of you, you can hear their voices in your ear, it's very important. <laughs> Najib's three children live in Beirut, and talking by telephone would lead to outrageous bills. Which is just one of many reasons why so many these days go online. Sending voice over the internet comes at just a fraction of the cost. From email to social networking, the internet owes itself to a virtual structure that connects users and information from around the world through a system known as peering. Computers connected to each other from the web share data, feeding off each other, and a process that seems to make the world go around. And around the world it goes. All internet traffic in the state of Qatar will ultimately have to pass this cold and noisy room where I'm standing. These expensive servers are owned and operated by Qtel, the country's telecommunications giant. But even these fancy machines have to rely on others to keep the country connected to the World Wide Web. The key advantage here are these fiber optic cables, which connect to high-speed networks across the Middle East, Europe, and eventually the United States. As it travels the world, there are countless areas that struggle to join the Internet's sophistication. But they anyhow do. The Gaza Strip is one such area. It's been under siege through a punishing war, and yet it still remains connected. Rawan Abu Hamda has not seen her parents and siblings since 2006. Her husband and children are among her two sources of comfort, but so is the web. I usually uh, talk to my mother through telephone, but uh, not on a regular basis. Yani, for example, for uh, the internet, I'm maybe two or three times I can chat with my sisters and know their news, but uh, through telephone I cannot call them yani, maybe once a week or, two, or two, uh, twice a week. Yani, I, I can't because it's expensive, of course. It also helps Rowan cope with the lack of information. It's a major thing on our life. We cannot yani, live without it. Fortunately for so many, one does not have to be a technical expert to understand the World Wide Web's inner workings. Those precise details are left to the experts we call on, taken for granted perhaps, except when we consider how 20 years ago we existed without this basic yet vital invention. Clayton Swisher, Al Jazeera.